Welcome to Serial Tech. My name is Heath Fields. In this video, we'll walk you through a mechanical setup and cabling for our new Pro PCIe analyzer. In this first segment covering hardware setup of our Pro PCIe analyzer, uh, we'll go over the rear panel, which contains a variety of ports, uh, switches, and a button for configuring the analyzer, um, for setting up communications, and of course for power. First, in the bottom left corner, we have uh, this circular hole here hides a reset button. Uh, when you hold this button down while turning on the power button, uh, a factory known good image will be flashed to uh, the FPGAs, putting the analyzer back in a known good state. Uh, and this is great if the analyzer happens to uh, get into some sort of inconsistent state. Uh, next, we have uh, the power supply. Uh, the analyzer has an internal power supply. Um, as you can see, any standard PC power cord uh, will work for connecting the analyzer to uh, the wall socket. Uh, we also have a dedicated power switch for the power supply itself. So for the analyzer to be turned on, both this rear power switch, uh, specific to the power supply, and the front power switch uh, need to be on at the same time. Next, we have two uh, SATA uh, data style ports that are used to connect the analyzer to our logic adapter. The logic adapter can be used to bring in additional signals besides uh, the PCIe signals uh, that are captured on the front side of the analyzer. Next, we have cascade out and in ports for daisy chaining analyzers together. A single unit like this one can capture one, two, four, or eight uh, lanes of traffic uh, by daisy chaining additional analyzers uh, greater than uh, eight lanes of traffic can be captured and that connection is made uh, through these ports from one analyzer to the next. Uh, that way the clock is shared and all the data coming through will have the correct timestamp. Last, in the bottom right corner, we have a USB 3.0 and Ethernet ports. Uh, both of these are used to connect the analyzer to a PC, uh, again, via USB or via Ethernet, and uh, using that PC to drive the analyzer to control it. Okay, in the previous segment we covered the rear panel, uh, now we'll cover the front panel. Again, going from left to right, top to bottom. So first off, uh, on the left hand side we have our main power switch. Again, this power switch together with the power supply power switch on the rear panel of the analyzer must both be on for the analyzer to have power and to be turned on. Beneath the power switch we have two SMA connectors and a manual button all dedicated to our triggering functionality. Uh, the manual button uh, can be used to trigger the analyzer whenever a capture is already in progress. Uh, next, the SMA uh, trigger in connector is used to uh, connect the analyzer to, uh, for example, an oscilloscope and use the oscilloscope's trigger signal to trigger the analyzer. Uh, next to it, is a trigger out port and this SMA connector uh, then takes the analyzer's trigger signal and then connects that to an external piece of lab equipment such as an oscilloscope and will then when the analyzer triggers uh, this signal will be sent out and will trigger uh, again that external piece of, of lab equipment. Uh, next we have uh, two sets of two SFF8644 ports and these are the main ports connecting the analyzer to the interposer um, and then allowing the, the PCIe traffic to be brought to the analyzer for analysis. Above each set of SFF 8644 ports are a set of LEDs describing in real time the activity on the ports. Um, here at the top, the activity LED uh, is lit showing that there's a, a successfully established, established link between the host and the device. Um, the TLP uh, LED lights specifically when you have transaction layer packets on the bus. The next three, error status, CRC error, and coding error, uh, light up respectively when uh, there's some sort of error on the bus. And at the bottom, we have uh, an LED for training, uh, signifying that TS1s and TS2s are present on the bus. 
This set of LEDs, uh, there's an analogous set for the upstream and downstream SFF8644 ports. Uh, next here, in the center of the analyzer, we have two sets of LEDs. The top show in yellow, green, and blue the speed of the traffic, whether that happens to be PCIe Gen 1, Gen 2, or Gen 3. Below that, there are a set of eight LEDs that show how many lanes are being used for the current link. Um, again, there are eight, and so um, anywhere from one to eight LEDs will be lit, depending on the, the width of your lane. Um, let's see. Here on the right side, we have an LCD display, uh, which shows the analyzer serial number, IP address, and unit number. The unit number comes in handy trying, when you're trying to distinguish which analyzer is which uh, in a situation where multiple analyzers are daisy-chained together, uh, what we refer to as cascading. Uh, here, uh, just to the left of the LCD display, we have a set of buttons that can be used to modify the IP address uh, even without a software connection to the analyzer. So directly here through the front panel, we can modify the IP address. And lastly, uh, directly below the LCD display, there are a set of LEDs that show the current status uh, of the analyzer in real time. So these system status IDs, the first is config. Uh, this will light green when the analyzer is successfully turned on and the FPGAs inside are initialized and ready to go. Uh, if that light is red, then uh, we'll need to, to contact support or perhaps consider the factory reset option uh, via the rear panel that we described in the segment on the rear panel. Next to that is the Gigabit Ethernet LED. Uh, this light is off when there's no Gigabit Ethernet connection. Uh, incidentally, when there's no Gigabit Ethernet connection, the IP address will read 0000. zero, zero, zero. When you have an IP address, uh, then the Gigabit Ethernet light will be one of three colors, red for a 10 megabit per second uh, Ethernet connection, um, yellow for a 100 megabit per second Ethernet connection, and green for a 1000 megabit per second Ethernet connection. Uh, next to it, uh, the USB LED is lit when using uh, our USB 3.0 port to connect to a PC and control the analyzer. The last two LEDs here, uh, run and trigger. Uh, run is lit when a capture is in progress, when the analyzer is actively capturing data. Trigger lights, uh, once the trigger event that the analyzer has been set to wait for has occurred on the bus. And that covers uh, the basic functionality of the front panel. In our last segment, we cover the functionality of our Pro PCIe Analyzer's front panel. In this segment, we'll be covering the interposer itself. Now, the interposer, as the name suggests, um, goes between the host and the device and provides the physical connection between the analyzer and the device under test. Um, this specific interposer is our slot interposer. We also have M.2 and SFF8639 interposers currently available and more uh, other form factors uh, coming soon. So to, to go over some features of this slot interposer specifically, um, we're looking at a PCIe card style uh, interposer with two edge connectors. On the bottom, the edge connector allows us to insert the interposer into our host uh, PCIe socket. And then up, up at the top, we have another edge connector that allows uh, a device in this case an HBA, to be inserted into the interposer itself. The interposer has two power uh, connectors, one facing up and one facing to the side, and this allows, regardless of the confines of a chassis that you may be working with, uh, makes it easy to connect power uh, to the interposer itself. Next, our interposer has a set of SMA connectors that allow you to connect um, any of the signals uh, going from the interposer to the analyzer to uh, an external piece of lab equipment such as an oscilloscope to monitor uh, any given signal at a very low level. Um, next we have two sets of jumpers that allow for signal conditioning. Uh, these have 
uh, different gain and short and long um, you know, settings allowing the, the signal to be modified in order to control for any kind of signal integrity issue, um, for attenuation, etc. and make the presence of the analyzer as inobtrusive as possible on the bus. Lastly, we have, uh, as on the analyzer front panel, we have an analogous set of SFF 8644 connectors here, uh, and this makes the, the final and physical connection between the interposer and the analyzer itself. So in the previous segment, we discussed uh, the features of our uh, interposer. Uh, now we'd like to explain just a bit about our cables. Uh, now we have various types of interposers. Uh, M.2, PCIe, and SFF 8639 are available now, with more interposers coming later. The connection between the interposer and the analyzer is always made through this cable. Um, it uses SFF 8644 connectors but has a proprietary signal brought out between the analyzer and the interposer itself. So uh, this cable, uh, part number SA4444C1MS1, uh, is required for proper operation of the analyzer and interposer. Uh, should you need um, additional cables besides the ones supplied with your analyzer, please do contact Serial Tech. Uh, so the connection between the analyzer and the interposer is, is fairly straightforward, um, but does help to see it made once, just to see uh, the nuances involved. So, uh, I'll go ahead and disconnect the interposer from the motherboard here to point out that um, the interposer and ionalyzer share uh, basically analogous sets of 8644 connectors. Uh, the main difference being that the downstream on the analyzer is on the left side, whereas downstream on the interposer is on the right, uh, and vice versa for upstream. The connection between the analyzer and the interposer is made always beginning with uh, D1, the leftmost connector on downstream, to D1, the leftmost downstream connector on the interposer, for upstream, the U1, the leftmost connector uh, on the upstream port, to U1 on the interposer. And so as long as that's kept straight, uh, again, the connection uh, connecting the analyzer and the interposer is very straightforward. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Again, connecting D1 on the analyzer to D1 on the interposer. And then with the second cable, connecting U1 on the analyzer to U1 on the interposer. Now, uh, once this is done, uh, all that remains is to insert the edge connector on the uh, interposer into the PCIe slot or edge connector on your motherboard, on your host. And finally, to connect your device. Once this is done, it's important to remember that um, whether or not you're interested in capturing training, the training information is actually used by our analyzer to properly decode traffic. Because that's the case, uh, we need the analyzer to be turned on uh, before the device under test. More specifically, the interposer must be powered on first, and that's done simply by, by plugging in power into either of the power connectors. And once power is plugged in, turning on the analyzer itself, and then finally, lastly, turning on the device under test. Uh, should you need to power cycle the device under test, you need to make sure as well to power cycle the analyzer. Um, so again, you would turn off your device under test, turn off the analyzer, turn the analyzer interposer on first, uh, analyzer box itself second, and then finally turn on the device under test third. Um, so with that, we've covered everything that's necessary to take your analyzer out of the box and uh, hook up successfully to a PCIe system 
And uh, next, in our next set of videos, we'll cover how to set up the software to finally capture a trace. Thank you.